have a date with the angel. Starring Betty White. Bill Williams as Gus Angel. Presented by the Plymouth Dealers of America, who proudly sell and service the beautiful new Plymouth for 1957. The time, about four months after Vicki and Gus Angel were married. The plot, there's no business like monkey business. The main character, there's no business like monkey business. <laughs> Come on, darling, we better get going if we're going to see the falls. They might turn them off. <laughs> to the gang at Henshaw, Taylor, Malcolm, and Chase. Care of George Cl Why care of George? Read it and see. <laughs> That'll pay him back for the exploding matches he gave to me. Even on your vacation. You know, if I were Mr. Taylor, I'd take a pretty dim view of this. My so-called dignified insurance staff playing practical jokes on each other. Well, Taylor's not as lenient as Mr. Henshaw used to be, but uh, we're educating him. Oh. oh, darling, isn't this great? Great. You have a wonderful knack for changing the subject. Mm -hmm. Should we go? Mm -mm. Oh. <laughs> Don't forget George's butterfly. Can you see George's face when he opens this letter? Did <laughs> <laughs> you yell? Yeah. How do you like that Gus Angel pulling a cheap trick like that on me? Well, George, you should have checked the envelope first. You know, you can feel those things through the paper. Yeah? Yeah, let me read that note. <clears throat> Dear gang, there's every animal in the world up here in Yellowstone, so we thought we'd send you one, Gus and Vicky. <laughs> hey, is Vicky in this too? Well, that's what it says. Oh. You know, George, we've got to get up a nice little reception for them when they get back. Yeah. <laughs> Let me see. Hey, I'll tell you what we do. How about turning their lawn upside down? Uh, how do you do that? Well, you, you just cut it up in one foot squares and turn it over. And when they come home, all they got is roots. <laughs> no, nah, no, nah, everybody does that. I know what they do. Hi, Keith. Uh, oh, hi, Keith. Keith. Hey, when do we go on strike? I uh, know, we were just discussing getting back at the angels. Oh, get a load of that. <laughs> The old butterfly trick. Yeah, uh, Clemson fell for it. Oh, well, gee whiz. <laughs> See, I know. Why don't we dump a load of gravel in their driveway? No, no, no. It's too expensive. Uh, <laughs> the thought. I know where we could get. What? What? <laughs> <laughs> well, go ahead. I like it already. Uh -huh. it? Yeah, this is the best one yet. <laughs> They say there's every animal in the world up in Yellowstone, right? Right. Well, we're going to show them one they have never seen. Now, here's what we do. Keats, <coughs> Kenny, you have work in here? <laughs> Why else would we be here, Mr. Taylor? Sorry. Um, who did the correspondence with the uh, Lydia Blyers people? Well, I, I believe that was Gus Angel's account, sir. Oh. Well, it looks like I'll have to bother him the moment he gets back from his vacation. Uh, yes, sir. Well, why didn't you tell me that Angel had sent us a letter? Oh, Mr. Taylor, don't, don't open that, sir. Mr. Taylor, sir. Don't open ah! <laughs> Mr. Drake, tell Keats and Kenny to return to Clemson's office immediately. Mr. Taylor, shut up, Clemson. <laughs> Gentlemen! <clears throat> Gentlemen, for some months now, you three men, and Angel, of course, have uh, engaged in a series of undignified and ridiculous and utterly childish practical jokes. Yes, Come back here. Hey, sir, I merely happen to be passing Clemson's off. Yeah, me too, sir. 
George, this is your office. <laughs> Shut up, Fenton. I am telling you, here and now, there will be no more practical jokes in this office. Do I make myself clear? Yes, sir. 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 That will do. Now, you all know how I dislike threats, but this is a business office, and by thunder, it's going to be operated like a business office. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That is all. Fellas, I don't know about you, but he made me feel absolutely juvenile. Yeah. Yeah. And you got to admit, he's been a pretty good sport. Yes, sir. Now, what do you got in mind? Now, now here's what we do. <laughs> Seeing double. Just the same. I'm glad we drove straight through. Give us the whole weekend to rest up. taking care of the house for you, so George had the key and Carl organized it. It had to be them. It would take at least two of them to lift it. How do you like those guys? This is not the moment to ask me that question. Because <laughs> you're not going to go to bed without getting rid of him, are you? Well, sure. What harm can he do? He's stuffed. <laughs> Too tired to be reasonable. Get him out of here. Honey, he's too heavy. Tomorrow I'll call Murph and he'll help me get rid of him. Let's put this thing down away. Oh, it's on. Yeah. Good morning. Me, Jane. <laughs> honey, Murph had a wonderful idea on how to get even with those guys. Now, honey, we shouldn't get Murphy mixed up in this. Well, that's what neighbors are for. Like I told Gus, these three clowns are going to expect some reaction out here, and all you do is just nothing. Sure, they won't be able to stay away. You know darn well the three of them will be by this afternoon to see how pale and frightened we are. Well, he isn't exactly cuddly. <laughs> I'd love to see their faces when you pretend that you don't know nothing about them. <laughs> They'll flip. I, I don't mean to sound like a stuffed shirt, but hasn't this practical joke thing gone just about far enough? Well, who are you hurting? Come on, Gus, let's get him out of here. Can you get that door? <clears throat> You 
know, I got a friend who does this for a living. <laughs> Carries gorillas out of bedrooms? No, oh, he's a live gorilla. Well, I mean, he isn't alive. Well, he is alive. But you see, he's got this gorilla suit, and when he gets in it, he looks alive. See, he works in pictures and stuff like that. Uh, you know, I bet there'll be plenty of work around for a guy like that. Oh, yeah, there sure is. You know, I've known this guy a long time. He, he works all the time. Him and me used to drive a cab together. Well, you see, we didn't both drive the same cab. I, uh, I had my cab, and he had his cab. <laughs> We know, Murph. Yeah. Do you think you can get this guy to come over here? Who? This gorilla friend of yours. Kelly? What do you want with... Oh. <laughs> Gus, no. Who are you hurting? Yeah. Gus, we have one gorilla. We don't need two. They deserve it. Look what those guys did to us. No. Can't you see their faces when the stuffed gorilla moves? Well, I just don't want you... I... I... <laughs> Murph, do you think you can get this fella? I'll call him right away. Now, here's what we'll do. Double. Double. Value. Value. Deal away. Deal away. This is the big event now going on at your Plymouth dealers. Today, your Plymouth dealer will give you a double value trade-in that makes your present car worth far more than it will ever be worth again. With this, you can deal away in a sparkling new Plymouth, the one car that's going to stay new, new in luxurious flight sweep styling, revolutionary torsion air ride, foolproof push button drive, full time power steering, and many other years ahead features. And Plymouth's lasting newness means more dollars for you come trade in time next year. So, friends, See your Plymouth dealer now, during Plymouth's Double Value Deal Away. Thank you. You should have dropped by at the last minute like this, Mr. Kelly. Murph's done me a lot of favors. Besides, it sounds like fun. <laughs> <laughs> yep, old Kelly will do a real good job for you. You sure you won't stay and watch? Oh, no, no, Kel's right. They wouldn't act natural with a stranger around. <laughs> Well, we'll give you a scream-by-scream scream report. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're here. Yeah. I'll sneak out through the paddock. See you later. Come on, Mr. Kelly. Now, remember, at first, we're going to pretend we don't know anything about any gorilla. Now, stand between the beds where the stuffed gorilla was. What do I do when I get in the bedroom? Ad lib. <laughs> oh, oh, it's good to see you, oh, boy. Oh, well, oh, you're Vicky, you're welcome good. home. No. How was Yellowstone? Oh. Hi, Vicky, honey. Oh, How are you? What a surprise. Glad to see you. <laughs> well, I just stopped by to return your key, and look who I run into on the front porch. Oh. <laughs> well, I happen to be in the area, and, and suddenly I remembered you were about due home. Would you just get in today, kid? <laughs> Last night. <laughs> yeah. uh, late. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I'll take the key now, George, while I think of it. Uh, what key? Uh, oh, key. <laughs> yeah, key. <laughs> sure. Mm -hmm. Drove right through, huh? Straight through. Never mind, George, I can get the key from Wilma. Uh, that's a funny thing. You know, I made a special trip here, too. Yeah. <laughs> key. Well, you're here now. That's the main thing. Yeah, well. <laughs> yeah, well. 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 <laughs> uh, uh. Everything all right when you got home? Well, sure. Why shouldn't it be? Well, no reason. I, I just thought there was Wilma looking after everything and all that. <laughs> no reason. I must call Wilma and thank her. The place looked perfect when we came in last night. Oh, Gus, I just happened to think. I, I wonder if you have a black tie. Dolly and I are going to a formal dance at the country club next week. And, well, I must have mislaid mine, so I'll just go in the bedroom and borrow yours. I don't have one. You don't have one. <laughs> oh, say, Vicky, uh, that reminds me. Wilma seems to think she left a sweater around here somewhere. She did. I found it this morning. Good, I'll get it. <laughs> here it is. What? Yeah. <laughs> That's it. 
Mm. Oh, Gus, if the, if the fellas will excuse you, can I see you outside just a minute? Honey, we can't be rude. Oh, no, 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 please. Go ahead. We're, right. We're like one yeah. of the family. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Make yourselves at home. Yeah. Sure, thank you. Do you think we put that girl in the wrong house? <laughs> What's the matter with you? Can't you see what they're doing? They're just toying with us. They are? You know, they've got that gorilla stash somewhere, and they're just trying to make us sweat. Sure. Look, you look in the bedroom, and I'll go in there. Too. It's okay, George. It's right where we left. I was right. I sat on the back porch. Sure. Now, look, here's what we're going to do. <laughs> You're talking about the gorilla. He's in the bedroom. Sorry, you were right. So are you. Now, there has to be some. Look, even I know we can't both be right. Come on. Wait a minute. You know how they do this, don't you? This room somehow connects with the service porch, and every time we charge into one room, they shove the grill in the other. Yeah, either that or they got some pretty shaggy laundry out there. <laughs> well, come on, let's get this monkey out of here. He's costing us 10 bucks a day. Yeah. Carl? Yeah? Uh, you remember him having loose eyeballs? Loose eyeballs. Well, either they're loose or he's watching us. <laughs> oh, come on. <clears throat> Carl. Yeah. Does he feel kind of mushy to you? Ah, <laughs> oh, it's just that the room is warm and he's softening up a bit. <laughs> you know, you're right though. There's something different. They've done something to him. Well, come on, let's get him out. No, 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 wait a minute, George. Let's sit down and attack this thing intelligently. Intelligently, yeah. <laughs> well, the first thing is, we know we put a gorilla in here yesterday. Right. That's right. The angels came home last night and saw that gorilla. That's right. And just a moment ago, you saw a gorilla in the kitchen. Uh, laundry room. That's right, in the laundry room. <laughs> Oh, no. Uh, I had an idea there was a man in there. No, 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 it's a funny gag. It's, it's a funny gag. It's funny. <laughs> when we came home last night and saw your gorilla, well, we had to do something. She slept in the other room. Oh. Who didn't? <laughs> hey, Gus, I enjoyed your butterfly. <laughs> Uh-oh, wait a minute, kid. So did Mr. Taylor. We've had it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mr. Taylor blew his stack when he opened that envelope of yours with a butterfly in it. Oh, no. Yep, I'm afraid we're gonna have to find some other little game to play at the office. He told me to warn you, Gus. I'm warned. <laughs> you know, it's a shame Keats couldn't have been here to see all. The whole thing was his idea. Nah, he'll be around. Oh. Uh, that is a shame. <laughs> yeah. He will? Oh, sure, well, he's got... Yes! <laughs> yes, Mickey! Yeah. Yeah. Now, here's what we'll do. We'll get Mr. Can you stay just a little while longer, Mr. Oh, Kelly? I'd love it. <laughs> All right. We'll, we'll pull the same gag we did on you, except we'll do it in the living room. And when Jim Keats sees it, and he's not... Oh, there he is, there he is. Now, you come in in a little while, and don't let him see you. No, no, no. <laughs> Have fun. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There's a feeling you get when you own a new Plymouth. You can call it pride. You can call it pleasure. You can call it satisfaction. Actually, it's all three. Pride, pleasure, and satisfaction. When you can say, my new car is a Plymouth. 
Because when you own a new Plymouth, you've got the most advanced car in its field. Here are a few of the many years ahead features you get with the new Plymouth. Flight sweep styling. So new, it's three full years ahead of the other two. Torsion Air Ride. The greatest single engineering advance of the year. Toto Contact Brakes. For sure stopping power that gives you a greater sense of safety. And push button drive. The modern way to drive. It's only when you own and drive a Plymouth that you can fully appreciate its superiority in everything that counts in an automobile. And now is the very best time to see your Plymouth dealer during his double value deal away. It's your chance to get the one car that's going to stay in you at the lowest price of the year. Right now, your Plymouth dealer is dealing away with trade-ins that make your present car worth more than it will ever be worth again. So friends, see your Plymouth dealer for the double, double value, value deal away. Deal away. Time? Oh, call Gus. Oh, no, no. I realize it's a very poor time to call, but you see, my vacation is starting Monday, and, uh, well, I wanted to brief uh, Gus on uh, one of our clients. Uh, Lila and I go to Europe, leaving Monday. You can't leave soon enough. Yeah. Don't you find? Yes, yes, you're quite right. I just hope you have as good a time as we did. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for the candy. That was so sweet of you, Mr. Oh, not at all. <laughs> oh, oh, Angel. Mr. Taylor, I didn't know you were here, sir. Yes, I just wanted to tell you a little something here, and then I'll be on my way. Oh, don't go, don't go, Vicky. This will only take a second. Uh, this is the uh, uh, Blyer's account. These papers, Gus, were at my home, and I wanted you to have them before I left. Send everything to her home and nothing to the plant. And, uh... Everything in trouble. Yes, well, I, I guess that's it. <laughs> well, I'm awfully glad you're home, and uh, you can know how glad I am that I'm going. Oh, yes, we can. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, goodbye. Goodbye, goodbye sir. <laughs> oh, oh, Gus, there is just one thing more. Uh, I, uh, I had to give the boys quite a dressing down the other day. It's about those eternal practical jokes. Angel, they've got to be stopped. Now, uh, you're the stabilizing influence down there, the office. <laughs> and uh, I'd kind of like to have you take charge while I'm away. You know, it's absolutely ridiculous. Men, grown men acting like children. Why, uh, why even Keats is guilty. Wrong one. No, 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 I thought he was the wrong one, too. I, 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 but, but he was, he was guilty. Yes, he, he was the one who, uh, he punched those little holes in the paper drinking cups, you know. That would be ridiculous. A, a dignified man like Keats, uh, uh, you know, thinking that it's funny to see water dribbling down somebody's shirt front. No. <laughs> you know, we have a business firm, and I... <laughs> we have a business. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Our Yellowstone? <laughs> well, th this friend of ours is the curator of the museum up there, and he didn't know what to... And he had this gorilla in his museum. And, uh, and it was confusing the tourists, so he asked us if we'd bring it down. What were you saying about... <laughs> was, uh... Was it here when I came in? Well, yes, he, he's too big for the closet, and, uh, uh, you want me to deal directly with Miss Blyas, sir? Yes, oh, oh, yes, Gus, uh, you see, you're the only one that can... Uh... Yeah, but he's not indigenous to Yellowstone. Well, that's what was confusing the tourists. 
Well, I... Offhand, I would say that your, uh, your Yellowstone friend is imposing upon you. Well, we're going to get him out of here the minute we can. Well, Lila and I are booked on, uh, for Liverpool on one of the big steamers. And, uh, you know, I'm just old-fashioned enough to, or uh, maybe I'm just old enough to think that an ocean voyage is the only voyage. <laughs> I... <laughs> yet I, 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 I... I may be old-fashioned, but... <laughs> I always say that uh, an ocean voyage is, uh, is the only voyage. I... Uh, uh, I, uh, 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 of course, th th this, this may make me feel old-fashioned, but uh, uh, that's the way I have. I mean, I mean, uh, could I have a glass of water, please? Let me get it. No, 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 no. I, I, I'll get it. I, I need the walk. Now we have a two-headed friend. <laughs> Gentlemen. Uh, Mr. Taylor. Shut up, Simpson. <laughs> now, uh, which one of you would like to explain this childish nightmare? Well, you see, sir, Keats Clemson and I, uh, well, we rented that gorilla with the idea of stashing it in the angel's bedroom so that when they came home tired from their vacation, they'd... Oh, they'd... I know. Oh, I know. <laughs> That's the funniest thing I ever heard of. Well, we kind of thought it was in the case. Isn't it? Yeah. And when we found the gorilla, I thought of Mr. Kelly here, and, and he was kind enough to, to uh, come over and scare them. Yes. <laughs> uh, what else? Well, then when we found out Jim Keats was coming over, we thought it'd be funny. All right. All right. This is exactly the childish nonsense I've been talking about. Now, today is Saturday, and technically you're on your own time, but I... Did you say Jim Keats was coming over here? Well, yes, sir. That, that's what started all the trouble. When the, when the doorbell rang, we thought... <laughs> Mr. Taylor, no. Now, here's what we'll do. <laughs> Got a date with an angel. Going to meet her at seven. Got a date with an angel, and I'm on my way to heaven. Ladies and gentlemen, your Plymouth dealer invites you to watch the Lawrence Welk program Top Tunes and You Tell It on this same network. And the dramatic show Climax every week on another network. Tom Kennedy speaking. Good night, everybody. Good night.